name is Alan Edwards. I was born in 1936. So at the time of this recording, I am 86. What follows are my school reflections. Uh, memories of those early school days are generally dominated by the presence of much snow and ice. I recall arriving at school uh, on winter mornings to see crates of milk bottles in the yard with the cardboard tops pushed off the bottles uh, by the force of the frozen milk. In those early school days, 1942 and for some time thereafter, pupils received one third of a pint of milk each and every school day. Some as I recall, with nature walks along Western Road, where an area of wasteland had many wildflowers and gorse bushes. I don't recall great detail uh, about the nearby damaged area caused by the aerial mines dropped by the Luftwaffe in 1941, when sadly uh, many were killed and injured. Air raid drills were held as intervals when we visited the air raid shelter situated between the school and Western Road. As a reward for those drills, we each received a small Horlicks tablet. I recall the early days of reading, writing, numbers and craft work, always striving to earn the much desired coloured stars in our exercise books, signifying achievement. All classes were generally enjoyed. Mr Elliot was the head of the junior school. Apart from reading, writing, reciting tables and craft work, I don't recall much more on the learning front. Football and cricket were popular. Uh, the school team played football on the town fields on Saturday mornings and cricket played wherever pitches could be found. I recall a brief visit to the school by a group of Dutch children who were refugees following the German invasion of the Low Countries in May 1940. Meeting anyone from another country was unusual in those early days. So meeting children from another country was quite an experience. A school party was held in celebration of the end of World War II, which I guess was at the end of the war in Europe. Small medals were given to children to mark uh, the occasion. Before relating to my experiences at Oswin Avenue School, a word about an ex-pupil, Bruce Woodcock. He was a pupil some years before my time, but he was obviously a hero of many. It was the days of radio, and uh, listening to his boxing encounters was a priority. His fights could only be seen at a cinema, on movie tone or Pathé News. I recall his interviews immediately after a fight, when he always advised his family that he was okay. My time at Oswin commenced in 1947. All the names that I mention are best memories and, and hopefully correct. Mr Mason was headmaster, but he soon retired and was replaced by R.V. Taylor. I recall several teachers who were at Oswin at some stage. These included Messrs. Outwin, Holt, Dixon, Evans, Green, Hill, Murray, Bedlington, Taylor, Kelly, Nicholson, two by the name of Anderson, Orty, and for a brief time, a lady called Gilbert. The name of the arts and crafts teacher escapes me. H. Taylor was the physical training teacher, and he was often seen around Balby on a weekend in athletic mode training for long distance walking. I believe the woodwork teacher was Murray, who was eventually replaced by Nicholson, and Bedlington, the metalwork teacher. 
Kelly was a wizard playing boogie woogie on the piano. The usual subjects were covered, and although I enjoyed the learning, uh, there was little depth in the studies in some of the classes. Unlike today, there was never any homework. Not a single piece of homework in four years. Classes were divided into north, south, east and west. I don't recall ranking according to ability, but uh, maybe it happened in some way. Experiences are personal to the individual, but generally speaking, I got on reasonably well in all classes. Many, however, disliked maths and science. Dixon was the teacher for those subjects, and he was noted for being quite strict. Overall, the school was well disciplined. I was a prefect, so well aware of that. Corporal punishment in the form of the cane existed, and it was used by staff, maybe not frequently, but it was present for those deemed to be transgressing. The presence of such punishment should not detract from the view that the overall climate in the school was good. The school had four houses, St George, St Andrew, St David and St Patrick, and all pupils were in one or another. Points were awarded for a variety of activities, and the house with the most points at the end of the year was declared Champion House of the Year. I was house captain of St Patrick's House at the time we gained that title. I was involved in forming a chess club and games played also gained points for houses. I remember David Beckwith as a good player. At one point about six of us played a chess match against Doncaster Grammar School and we won the contest. Apart from that match, uh, three of us played uh, against a boy at the grammar school, I think called Bradley, who we understood to be Yorkshire boy chess champion. We played against him all at one go and he beat us all. I think Bradley was the nephew of the teacher Evans. Sport was encouraged, but there was little formal coaching in soccer, rugby, cricket and swimming, as well as in athletics. In other words, there were never any coaching classes. We merely engaged in the activity. Eden Grove was the desired venue for the school sports day. Cross-country running comprised running past allotments to Hexthorpe Flats alongside the River Don and up through the Horseshoe Tunnel and back to school. I enjoyed playing soccer, uh, firstly for the school intermediate team uh, and then the senior team. Raymond Jeffries, who I believe eventually played for the army in his national service, and Derek Williams, who I think eventually played for Grimsby Town, were outstanding players. The little rugby that we had was played on the town fields. Cricket matches against other schools were greatly enjoyed, where games were often played on quite questionable surfaces, Sanford Road being one of the better venues. I recall two excursions. One was a long weekend camping in an area near what I believe to be a teacher's training college at High Melton, Sprotra. The other was a trip to London. In those days, people did not travel as far as we do today. And London was often viewed by many with uh, some trepidation. However, we went to London and uh, standing at the side of the River Thames at Westminster, near Big Ben, was magical. Little did I realise then that in the future I would work in central London for several years, a mere few hundred yards from the river, and spend much of my life living in a town at the side of the River Thames. I enjoyed art and a few of us attended Donkster Art School. 
I remember Colin Walton as a keen artist. A little drama was encouraged and plays arose from time to time. I was the fox in Pinocchio. Terry Robinson was the cat. I was Sir Toby Belch in Twelfth Night. And I reckon Terry Robinson was Sir Andrew Ogerchi. One vivid memory of the school was everyone being encouraged to grow hyacinths. And on the occasion of a show, when all were in bloom, the assembly hall being a mass of colour and overpowering fragrance. On the final day of school, both the boys' school and the girls' school attended a, a service at St John's Church. As head boy, I read a lesson, and my opposite number in the girls' school, Janet Mays, read another. Jenkins was primarily engaged in the gas and coal industries, providing mechanical handling systems for bulk materials such as coal and ore. The nature of the business uh, gradually embraced other handling systems and process machinery, but some heavy engineering continued. Uh, perhaps a claim to fame was the construction of the cradle upon which the Tudor ship, Mary Rose, was placed to facilitate its uh, lifting from the seabed in the Solent in 1982. That is, uh, that is the cradle, the yellow. Four years of spent at Oswin and 50 in the world of employment. The world of my employment is the subject of a further recording. I conclude by offering my best wishes to all who attended Aussie, either as a pupil or as a teacher or in any other role. If you would like to know more about the Aussie Through the Ages project, then please email me at Tony Armstrong 1959 at Outlook.com. Thank you.